happy 13th birthday, jewelry maker. Happy birthday! Happy 13th birthday, jewelry maker. I can't wait uh, to share the celebrations and some cake with you guys. Tune in for the epic deals that we've got in store for you. Uh, and happy birthday once again. Hi, my name's Susie Mellon, and I just want to wish jewelry maker a very happy 13th birthday. Mwah. Jewelry Makers this Saturday is the closure of Jewelry Makers 13th birthday party celebrations. Boo! But don't worry, we've got a fantastic Saturday show for you. I'm going to be joined by the fantastic Susie who is launching for the very first time her own Jadeite bead collection. Also, your deal of the day, you've seen it, is the beautiful Sakura Agate. We have it in brand new shapes and sizes, and also the most exquisite cashmere grey jadeite bangle. There's more, an exclusive book launch, gem extender chains, and lots of fun and games. So make sure you don't miss out that's this Saturday, the last official day of the birthday. Everybody and thank you so much for waking up on a Saturday to watch me do a make along. So thank you Mwah. and welcome to every single one of you and happy birthday jewelry maker last day the after party and it'll be time soon to open the box but first of all is anybody watching the Eurovision tonight because I am <laughs> can't wait love Eurovision so shall we open the box hope you haven't had a peek and here we go open it in front of you so it's box number 13 the biggest box there is let's see what we've got inside i know what we've got it all oh, there we go can you see that let me get it out and we'll have a look let me put it onto the worktop so that's what we've got and do you know what that is that is my um, designed bead. It's designed as a lotus flower, open lotus flower, but it's versatile. Now here, I've shown you two different designs. This one, I've just put a peg bell in the top, but it's through drilled. So there's just so much you can do with it. And because it's got a sort of a curved underneath, you can actually double them up and have them one on top of each other and have maybe a pearl inside if you're doing like um, a long line necklace. So really, really versatile. But the design we're going to make for the make along and to use that versatility of this design is this one here. So here I've added it obviously with pearls. That's me. And really, it's lovely um, because it uses some techniques as well. So hopefully, you got my Facebook page yesterday and you saw what you're going to need to make with the make along. So first of all, let me mention the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a pair of cutters. You're going to need some pliers, any pliers that you've got. Very handy. And some round nose pliers. And that really is all the tools you need. Now, if you've got two sets of pliers, quite handy because we'll be opening and closing jump rings. That's what we need the pliers for. Um, for me, and you might need it as well, a pair of glasses. Otherwise, I can't see a thing. And then the um, items that we're going to need, uh, we're going to make a whole chain. But if you've got a chain that's ready made, use that. But for those that have got, because you know, like me, we might buy our lengths of chain and then you can adapt the size and really bespoke it to your own favourite length, then I'm going to do make a chain. So you'll need a length of chain of your choice 
and I've made this um, eight inches. Um, so it's half eight inches, which is it's going to make a 16 inch necklace. Then obviously we're going to need the bead. But if any of you have tuned in for the make along and you think I didn't manage to get the box or I've already made something with it. Oh, use another bead, just make along with what you've got. It doesn't have to be what I've got. That's what I always say. Um, I've used pearls, but you might not have pearls. You might have other beads, but make along anyway. But length of chain, then to make the uh, necklace, we're going to need a little bit of an extender chain, one inch. Then we're going to need a clasp. Here I'm using a bolt ring. You can use any, chance, any one you want. And then some jump rings. Now I've said five mil size, it can be any. Here I've just done a, a selection, but you're gonna need three in total of whatever size you need or have in your stash, entirely up to you. And then we're gonna need four head pins. We're gonna need three, um, which is ones up here, three pearls six little 11 -0 spacer beads or any spacer beads you've got it's just to make it look pretty i just like the little ends finished off and then for the pendant i've got a drop or a rice bead here um, with a spacer bead and then i've got another head pin with a spacer bead already on for the lovely lotus flower bead now, I'll tell you why I designed a lotus flower. As you, you may have seen in the adverts that later on today we're doing um, a collection of the bees. Um, I had to do a lotus flower, really, really important to me because uh, for me, the lotus flower embraces enlightenment. And all of you that know me know that I sort of live my life by karma and chakra. Um, so it's about that journey into trying to be a better person and to wear this is a reminder that I would always have good thoughts every day and, and do that journey because that's what a lotus flower represents. It represents um, obviously enlightenment as I've said but it also represents beauty of thought, beauty of personality and integrity. So it has lots and lots of meanings. And as we know, we've got closed lotus at the beginning of our journey, and then one that's fully open, as I've got here, that means we're following that path and that we're committed to that path of enlightenment. So for those that you, of you that believe, fantastic. For those of you who just want a shape, it's uh, a lovely little shape. Doesn't have to be uh, a lotus leaf, you might not be into karma and chakra, and I've done it specifically so it's not immediately obvious. It's got that lovely lotus leaf shape, but this could be a flower of your design. It could even be sort of like palm leaves coming out. You can make that into a lovely tree if you wanted to. So many things you can do with it. And as I say, this one I've through drilled, so really makes it versatile. And it's quite small. It's probably about what, uh, 10 millimetres by about... 12 or 14, so really, really dainty. So you can just wear it as a necklace, perfect. So shall we begin the demo? Yes. So glasses on. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna decide on our length of chain. Here, as I say, I've uh, done a chain that's um, for 16 inches, but you might want one slightly longer. You might want 130 inches. The choice is yours. If you've already got a chain and you're new to jewellery making, um, then, you know, just get your chain and then just watch for this part. But first thing we're going to do is add a jump ring. So now we need our pliers. So I'm just going to get a jump ring here. This one is my five mil. And I'm going to open it. And again, for all you newbies, we know how to open a jump ring. We open it from side to side. So we're opening the gate. It's as simple as that. We're not going to stretch it. We're not going to stress it out. All about being nice and calm. So then, first thing we do, bear with me, is then we just thread that through our chain. And me being me, it's uh, going to be a bit fiddly because I've, let's try the other side, uh, because I've used quite a big chain and I've used a very dainty chain. Here we go. There it goes. It goes on. Simples. 
So that is going to be the uh, ending to our class. Now I've closed it, but you want to keep it open because I've forgotten the last thing. This side is going to have that extended chain. You know, I said about an extended chain. We're going to put that one on there now. So there we go. And then we close it up. Always like to put extended chains because it just gives you that versatility uh, when you're wearing the necklace. Because sometimes, especially if you're making uh, fashionable um, necklaces that are maybe to fit quite tightly around your neck, we all have different neck sizes. So we might think, right, a standard one might be 14. 14 is a very, very popular um, size at the moment um, because it just fits around the neckline very very snugly but we might have smaller necks we might have bigger necks so if you've got a bigger neck and you can't put it on nothing worse than that so put an extended chain on it really really simple and then what we do is you can leave it like that but I always like to finish it off so what I'm putting here is you know we said one of the three um, pearls I'm going to actually put one of the pearls so here onto your head pin put a spacer bead and your pearl and then a spacer bead. Now my spacer beads happens to be the seed beads, my Yuki seed beads, this is the galvanized silver. But you might not want to put a, a spacer bead on at all, it really doesn't matter. So here, this is where we need our round nose pliers. And what we're gonna do is put it in very, very tightly into that. Now, if you're making a long, am I going too fast? You know, let me know, let the studio know if I'm going too fast. I'm trying to do it at a make a long pace. So we've got our head pin. Now, as you can see here, I've got my head pin really close to the very edge because I want to make a smallish um, loop. I don't want to make one that's going to be too big and fussy. So first of all, I always do it facing away. So you just a little pressure, face it away. Okay, then I tilt my <coughs> pliers so they're now facing upwards. Can you see that? And then I'm now pushing it towards me. So I'm saying, come here, come here. And then I'm pushing it down. See, down you go, down you go. And now it's saying, Susie, but I'm stuck. I think, okay. So now we turn our pliers again horizontally. Can you see that? And then push it all the way round to make a complete circle. Hang on a sec. Let me get that back on because it's full. Can you see that now? Can you see that? A little circle. There we go. So we've made a complete circle. So now I'm going to put them back in my head pin, my pliers, and I'm going to thread, before I do it up, thread my extended chain, let it go onto that loop, let it click, and you'll hear it click, and then can you see? Can you see that now? It's, can you see that it's now clipped on? Excellent. There we go. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little wrap loop. So I'm going to put my pliers back in. i will just swap the pliers for now. Um, and then I'm just going to turn that round with my fingers. Can you see that? Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just turning it. And I do two complete turns. I don't do any more than that. And I just keep those turns consistently. And I make sure that it comes up to the top because what I'm going to do now is snip that off. And if it's at the top, I can see exactly where I'm snipping. So I'm using my cutters, and this is why you need your cutters. And I'm going to just snip that off. There we go. And then you might want to, just to make sure that it's smoothly in there, just give it a good old crimp. And there we go. Can you see that? My hands in the way. So now we've got an ending to the first part of our chain. So the second part, Move these out of the way is we need to put a bolt ring clasp on. Now you're thinking, I can hear you thinking, um, but if I put the bolt ring, how am I going to get my necklace on? All will be revealed. But first of all, now here I'm just using a smaller jump ring, but you don't have to. You don't have to at all. I'm just changing the jump rings. I just happen to have a smaller one. And I'm going to use these pliers. And again, we open it sideways. We don't want any stress at all. And then we're going to feed it through our chain. You might have a bigger chain um, with larger holes. It might be easier. And then before I close it, we then add our clasp. And then we're going to close up that jump ring. So, there it is. Can you see that? 
So that is a complete chain. Can you see that? So that is your chain. So that's how you make a chain, really, really simple. And I always recommend using uh, a bit of extender as well. So now we've made our chain. So you could leave it like that. And Excellent. So now we're coming to the part where we're going to make the pendant for this and we're going to make this one here. So I'm um, being versatile. I've actually put a little drop pearl on it. As I say, you might not have a pearl. You might have one. You might have some lovely beads that you want to use, or you might want to have a birthstone. And you're thinking, pearls aren't my thing, Susie. I'm going to use garnets or whatever you've got in your stash. But I'm going to do it as a drop. So you might have those lovely briolettes, and you're thinking, oh, all those pear drops. Um, and thinking, oh, I don't know what to do with them. Add it to this design. So to make that, the first thing we do is we get our drop, put it on a head pin, put our bead, can you see that? We put our bead on the head pin and then I've put a spacer bead. So here, I'm going to pick this up, here what I'm going to do is not a wrap loop, I'm actually going to do a um, just a normal loop, which is another design. So this way you do it slightly differently and what you do is you push your bead so it's all really flush and then you bend it to the side like that so that we have an angle like that. And then depending on the size of hole, if you want a, a lovely uh, internal diameter of about three millimetres, you would use a whole centimetre for consistent size. I tend to make them a bit smaller, so I'll show you exactly where I'm doing. So it's just under a centimetre. So I do it about there. Can you see that? You happy with that? So we just do a snip. You'd be brave. You just snip that off. So I'm just going to grab that so it doesn't fly everywhere. So now can you see what I've done? So now we've got that. So here, I'm now, I'm not putting it up to the edge because I'm putting it now sort of like, oh, half a centimetre just maybe a bit more, just a bit more than half a centimetre. And what I've done here is I've got the bead facing me. I've got the angle of that um, uh, head pin facing outwards. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to gently coerce that into a loop. You just, right, and as I say, you're the boss. And can you see how easy that was? Can you see that? If I hold it there. There we go. So you can see the great thing with the TV is that I can see my glass can't. So you just do that till you're happy and that is fully closed. So is that now fully closed? And we're getting there a little bit more. Give it a bit of welly. Make sure that, that you're happy with it. Right, so are we happy with that? Yeah? So put that down. Second part of the design is the bit that you've, you, you might have cut off, you can use that because what you want to do is a loop at the bottom and then at the bottom, you, or, or use a, a head pin that's got a loop, saves time, or as I say, use that because that will be absolutely ample to use. Put a bead at the bottom because then it matches that bead there just for design. And then we're going to feed this up here and then I'm going to do exactly the same at the top. I'm going to bend it like that so I know that that's got some give. I'm not putting a bead at the top for this one, but you might want to. You might think, actually, I like having beads at the top, but I'm just being consistent with what I designed for this. And then I'm going to cut it about the same length because we, we want consistency. So can you see that we've done that? And then again... We're just going to make a loop. So again, oops. As I say, you're always the boss. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. So now we turn that and just make a loop. So we'll do that until we're happy with that loop. Happy with that loop. There we go. That's mine done. So that's that. So now all we do is we decide which side we want to open. So if I open this side, 
So we go back, and this is why I've done an open loop rather than a wrap loop. I can, now this one, I'm just going to open it like a side gate. Can you see that? I've opened it up. I'm now going to offer the other one inside it. So it's there. I should have done the bottom one first, really, shouldn't I? Um, and then I'm going to close it back up. So close that back up. So now, when I hold it, can you see that? We've now got our pendant. Okay. So we've now got a chain and a pendant. And here, for this one, I, I mean, that loop is actually big enough to go through the necklace, but I'm now going to just add one of our head pins that I said have on standby, and I'm just going to put that through, and that's actually our bail. So that's our bail to thread through. Now, the second part is actually we're going to adorn this chain. You don't have to. As I say, if, if I just show you on the overhead, if you just push that on, can you see that? If I just did that, that would be absolutely fine, wouldn't it? But I'm just going to make a little design in the actual chain, and that just bespokes this design. So what we do here is we make sure that we get to the centre and we decide that we're going to cut... And I would say about five inches, and I'll show you here. I always go around my neck to the back, to the, this is how I measure, and I think I want that to be about there. And that's about six inches. So then we measure six inches down, and I measure six inches, not from the chain length now, because remember we've got a, um, a, a sort of a clasp on, so that's going to actually add an extra bit of length. So I want it six inches from the back of my neck, which is about there. Can you see that? So here, I'm just going to cut one side. Just snip. Oh! Ouch! So, we've now, we get our other head pin. I'm using featherweight head pins because I'm using very delicate beads, but you might have thicker beads, you might have a thicker chain. And I always say, use the head pins that match your chain. So if you've got a thick chain, there's nothing worse than having a featherweight head pin as your um, sort of bit of extra because the featherweight head pin will look too small and it won't be consistent. So if you've got a thicker chain, use a thicker head pin. I've got a very fine chain here, and this fine chain has been made with 0.4 wire. So that's the reason, and the only reason, I'm using featherweight head pins for this design. So have a look at your chain that you've decided to use. If it's a 0.6, and you can have a look at it, then use a 0.6 head pin. If it's a really chunky chain, then use a 0.8 or even a 1 mil head pin, as long as your bees can get through that. So to make this, we put it on, and we let it fall to the bottom so it catches it. But we're going to do our wrap loop again. So just as we did earlier, I'm just going to go down about a centimetre and a bit. I'm going again, because we've got a very fine chain, I'm going to the very tip of my head pin. And again, I'm going to fold it towards me this time and just wrap it round so that I've got a loop. Can you see that? Can you see that? So now I've got a loop and it's all horizontal like that. Yep. Have you done that? Okay, now pick up my chain where I've cut and I'm going to feed that through because I want this to be added to it. So I'm going to, you can sometimes yank it on, which I've done, and can you see now that it, that is attached? Because what you don't want to do is not to have it attached. There you go, can you see that? It's nice attached. And can you see that that hole that I've done is a similar size to the chain itself? So it actually mirrors. The chain so that when you um, actually have this on it absolutely looks exactly the same because now this is why I say use some uh, pliers uh, because this is quite a small end I've got here I sometimes just use the um, pliers to get a bit of grip because what you want to do is that wants to be nice and neat and tight so that's going around twice as I say and then I'm just going to bring it up here can you see that? It's nice and tightly. Can you see that? 
and I'm now going to cut that as close to, and this is where flush pliers come in. Just snip that off, and again, just without, um, and then just I'm just going to crimp that a bit. Just make sure it's nice and smooth, because what you don't want is any scratches. And then I'm going to tip it upside down, and now that's attached. Can you see that? Can you see how invisible that looks? It's just seamless, isn't it? It just looks machine made almost, but it's not, it's handmade. And now we can actually say bye bye to that little bit at the top. If you've got some uh, 0.4 wire, by all means use 0.4 wire. You might think, I'm not going to waste my lovely head pins that I want to do bubble bracelets and necklaces with. So use 0.4 wire and then just make them lengths of about 35 centimetres. Um, but I'm using featherweight head pins here, so I've had to chop the top off, otherwise it just makes it difficult. So here, again, we just do exactly the same thing. We just wind that round. Now here, what we do, this time, again, pointing away. Do you remember what I said before? Pointing up, coming all the way round, sideways on, through back to you. So now I've got my circle and before I forget I need to reattach it to the other side of the chain can you hear that click it's like clunk click every trip clunk click every piece and then here we go this one's a bit longer so I might get away with using my fingers but if not if you want a really tight grip good uh, recommendation is to use some pliers because you get that extra grip and that neatness that is required. So I'm just going to push that down because what you want is that lovely neat finish. So I'm bringing that back round so I know that's exactly the same spacing that I did on the other side and then I'm just going to trim that off. Just going to trim that off with that and then I'm just going to I'll just show you that. Oh, can you see there? That this is useful. Can you see that? There's a bit sticking out, so I just need to trim that off a bit more. Can you see that? That's better. And then what I'll do is I'll just squish that down so it goes in. And now we have our first side attached. And that's the process, really, for making satellites. So we've got half of it made. So on our necklace we've got half of it made. Now all I do this side is rather than measure from the top I've put my bolt ring clasp and my uh, head pin at the side so if I bring that along can you see what I've done here so now what I do is a bit of just eye judgment I hold those together push Grab those and I'll tell you what you do just get a t-pin or something just drag it down so if you've got anything anything your pliers just drag it down like this so that you've got the ends exactly like that. So that now you, you know where you need to cut to. So I can see, can you see it's about there? I think it's there. So I'm going to cut that off. Now before I cut that off, before I do anything, I'm going to just slip that. If you didn't want to use a big head pin like this and you wanted to make it really, really delicate, then you don't need to do this, but I'm just going to add that in first. And then I'm going to start with this side. So repeat the process. Head pin, bead, pearl, bead. Now, I've got the wrong bead on here, so just bear with me while I get the right one, because what we don't want is the wrong one. So I have spare ones. So for those that you don't know what Mayuki is, this is Mayuki CBs and these are the CBs that I've used. Can you see they're nice and dinky? I love them. Absolutely recommend. Do you know why I use these? Because they're galvanised which means that they just absolutely won't tarnish, they've got a polish on them and the silver doesn't come off. Now if you're going to wear it every day in the shower, in the bath, etc, etc, the covering does come off eventually. But for normal use, where you just put it on during the day, take it off, 
they will last forever, will never tarnish and won't damage your um, pearls or any of your jewellery. It doesn't give that sort of black ring. So we've got our head pin, we've got our spacer bead, we've got our bead, I'm using a pearl, and we've got our other head pin, and then we just repeat the process. So I'm going down here about, what, one and a half centimetres? Close to the edge. And then this time, because, we, you know, uh, we've got nothing in the way, I can just do it in one movement and make that circle. So again, just to show you. So I hope you're joining me and making this as we're doing it. And um, I'm hoping that I'm not going too fast for you. And then we then get our last bit of long chain and put that little end through it. Pull it till it clicks in place. And I'll just show you that that is gone in. Can you see there? That's gone in again. Really, really simple. And can you see again, because of where I've positioned it on the pliers, that is almost the same size as the links in the chain. And this is what you want to do. So if you've got, again, bigger chain, then move your pliers slightly up. You want to have your loop to be the same size as whatever chain you have. You, you don't want small loops if you've got big chunky chain, again, because it would just look odd. So again, on this bit, because we've got quite a small length here, again, I will just use pliers to just turn it once and twice. Bring it up, can you see that? So I've brought it up. I'm gonna cut that again now. And that one is really, really flush. It's beauty of having flush head pins. So I don't actually have to do anything, but just for the point, I will just, just give it a squidge, makes it nice and soft, and then push it down to the other side. Can you see that is now firmly on? Can you see that that hole is now roughly the same size? You're not gonna notice that that is um, part of the head pin. And then we're gonna chop that tiny bobble off and because these are sterling silver uh, here I've made everything in sterling silver you don't have to I love I just love using sterling silver all the bits that you cut off put them into a little plastic bag don't throw them away uh, because after a time that they will weigh something and you can get your money back on them so again don't throw anything away and don't mix your metals so if you're having a day with working with silver just work with silver that day um, and then you know that everything that's on your board or your little mat is going to be sterling silver and what I do at the end of the day when I've finished I normally give this a good bang so that the following day it's clean and ready to go because tomorrow I might use plated metals so again here we go I've put the uh, pliers right flush against everything so that is not moving and I'm now going to move it towards me we're doing the rotation up a bit we're going to turn it round move that round so it's like that I'm now going to get the chain that already has my bead attached my little pendant and then I'm going to put that in let it click bring it round can you see that? We're now attached again. Can you, where am I? There we go. My hands are in the way. Can you see that? I'm going to just get changed to a pair and the, the pliers and get a nice grip on that. And then again, you might be able to do it with your hands. I prefer when I'm working with smaller featherweight head pins is to just use some pliers just to turn it. So I'm just doing two turns. So that comes up. And then I know again the two sides are absolutely identical some people like doing four turns and make a feature of that it's entirely up to you but whatever you decide to do on that design just keep it consistent and I know we've got lots of time left but that really is the necklace so can you see I've joined that this is now joined to the necklace um, now I've put that on the wrong side, everybody, so not to worry. So what we do is we take this off. 
as you say, any time it's working with Susie, something doesn't go quite right. So what we do, that's a beauty. So first of all, I'm going to show you the chain. This is now the chain that you've made. Can you see that? So that's the chain I've made. And then I'm just going to attach the pendant to it in the right place, which is in between both of them. You don't have to have um, a jump ring. You can do that straight from the, um, the pendant itself if you've made the hole big enough. But I'm just going to and just make sure that that marries up. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to just do the bolt ring up. I'm going to put it on the bolt ring like that. I'm going to move everything off my board. Everything to the side. And that is the next I'm going to yeah, there we go, that wants to be around the other side, oops, there we go, and if I, yeah, so I'm going to show you that and I'm going to show you up against the decolletage, uh, yeah, no, can you see that, can you see how delicate that is on it's just really pretty. I try to design my beads so that they're just really, really wearable, everyday wear. I always say everybody needs to have a bit of jade in their life. So if one of these shapes resonates with you, and I hope that this beautiful shape resonates with you that I designed, especially with uh, jewellery minders in mind, that um, you will like it. And as I say, it's so, so versatile. If you get two, you can make earrings. Now, I... As you know, I've got a bit of time left and I want to sort of just share with you sort of very quickly um, my Radiance collection. So here we go. Look at this. So you've got an early bird to it because I don't think we've actually shown these. So you've got first glimpse of what I've done. And I'd love your feedback during the show. Please text in and say what one you like or... Um, if there's any shapes that you think, oh, Susie, why didn't you think of that? Let me know. So I'm going to go through them really, really quickly with you. Now, as you've seen, as you've seen, I've got my lotus flower. And as you can see, really unique design in the lotus flower. So I've got it open and I've got this lovely little sort of bridge in there because you can always put things in them inside. So if I just take the one I've just made... Can you see that if I wanted to put something there, there is space? Can you see that? So if you've got a long line necklace, doesn't that look pretty? Or you could make that into a clasp. So you could have that as your clasp for a bracelet, because if you're into wire work, you know how to make clasps. But I just wanted to show you the versatility of all the beads. This one's got a through drill. So, and the meaning, again, I will explain to you, Obviously, enlightenment is the first thing that pops to mind, but it also means purity of thought, purity of heart, purity of looks, and um, integrity. So really, really lovely, and I always love to have lotus flowers in my design. Now, the second one, as you can see here, is my bamboo. I love bamboo, um, and I'm so pleased that we've introduced some bamboo carvings um, that you may have seen but this is an actual bamboo bead again this is through drilled and it's about 20 or so centimeters long i think it's about 24 centimeters long again very petite i've made these into earrings which we'll show later in the show but these you can put a lovely bead in between and then just do like a rope design with them you can just put a piece of cord through it and have it sideways so you could hang it sideways, just really simple. The reason I designed a bamboo, firstly, um, one of the first presents that my mum made me or had made for me when I was about, it was for my 16th birthday, was a bamboo ring and she had the shank designed in bamboo. And it's, and what, what she wanted to do for me then was to say, right, this is for personal growth 
but again, it's for family and it's just a wonderful, wonderful um, shape to have. So this is for personal growth um, and beauty as well. Beauty in the linear design. So it's for beauty and personal growth. Now we've got my hands a hand. Now anybody that knows me knows I love a hands a hand. One of my favourite designs. And I know we've done um, a jade hands a hand, but this one's slightly different. As you can see, if you can see close up, I'm actually wearing mine. So the one they sent me, I actually put on and I wear it. And it's a really delicately shaped bead. It's got the little hands and it's slightly different from all the other ones. I just wanted to make it just slightly contemporary looking in its design. So can you see all those lines that go through it? So they represent the fingers, but they just have a more contemporary look for it. Now, hands a hand, what does that mean? That means that it's giving you all the abundance and wealth that can be bestowed upon you. So when I'm wearing this, I'm saying to the world, give me the abundance of what the world can offer me in positivity, in love, light, abundance. If I want a great career, this is going to allow me to have that great career. This is going to allow me to have a happy life. So this is, the way I've had it faced um, is to have it for accepting abundance. If I'd have designed the whole, the other side, so if it was up that side, that would have been for protection, which is great. But jade in of itself is protective. Jade is such a lucky stone and a very protective stone. So I thought there's no need to actually do that. So what I've done is I've put the bead, um, the drawer hole sideways. So this allows you, if you wanted to just simply thread it, because all my designs are, um, they're not sort of gender related. So anyone can wear these. Um, you could just put a bit of cord through there or um, a pinch bell as I've done or just simply a jump ring. My mum had jewellery that she bought and she just had jump rings through them and that's how they sold them. So this is perfect for putting a jump ring through and it's at the right side that you can just put a jump ring on and then put your chain or your cord or anything you want to on there. So that is my hands a hand. Then, so excited about this, this next one is my infinity sign. Now, Again, I've designed this differently from other infinity signs because it's a very, very popular design. So why is mine different? I've actually designed it, as you can see, and they replicated my drawing exactly. It looks like a number eight as well. So it's got two different sort of sides to it. So it's an infinity sign. We've got that. Can you see that sign for infinity? Which is about... Um, our place in the world and just meaning that life will be enhanced and that we learn lessons as we go along. And the number eight is because it's such an auspicious number. The number eight um, in the Chinese culture is the luckiest, luckiest sign that there is. So I've designed it with the two meanings. And again, from a jewellery point of view, I've designed it through drilled. So you can see there is a, a hole that, if you can see, goes all the way through to the other side. What does that mean? That means that I can put a peg bale on there, leave it at that. I can put a jump ring through one of the holes. I can put a pinch bell through that hole or I can thread it through and have it as part of a necklace. It is just so versatile. And again, you can wear it long ways and you can wear it sideways. And then very similar to this design, but again, slightly differently, is our <coughs> endless knot. And I think they've created this beautifully. My drawing was a bit rubbish and they thought, I know what you mean, Susie. Now, so I was so excited, I thought, please don't let this one be exactly like my drawing because it would have been wibbly wobbly. But they've done it perfectly. <clears throat> and what this represents is um, everything that we do in life has cause and action. So everything we do has a reaction and it has an effect upon 
the world. So this reminds us that everything we do, we must do it with positive thoughts in life. Um, and it's all about the cycle of life, you know, birth, death, rebirth. But it gives us happiness. It's all the, also called the happiness knot. And this is why if we do things with a good heart, the karma that comes back is happiness and wisdom. So this thing in, gives us wisdom and happiness. So this is what this represents. So to wear that, to say, right, I will be a good person and life will be really kind because I'm going to be a kind person. And that's why you see so many people wearing the happiness knot because it imbues happiness and wisdom. And you'll see lots of um, uh, ropes being made into this design as well. You'll see quite a lot of these designs made in ropes on top of other um, uh, sort of pendants. And again, with this design, can you see there's lots and lots of drill holes in here so for wire workers absolutely brilliant you can embellish this again you can just put jump rings either side you can have it this way it's entirely up to you if you wanted to make it into a bracelet you can have it that way you might want to get several um, and attach them almost you know as a bracelet or you want to add it to a long line necklace absolutely fine um, you can put a pinch bail on those which is like a bail that just clips in um, and that's really all you have to do. In fact, um, a bit later, I'll show you what I've done with mine. Mine are just the simplest of designs. Um, and I just think, as, you know, and they're a lovely size because they're just so wearable, just as a pendant. They aren't big. You can have them on and forget about them, but it means that you're wearing a piece of jade. And then finally, one of my favourite is this fish absolutely love it and at this one they've absolutely replicated my drawing to a t i wanted this what i call a happy fish it's got its tail up saying i'm really happy and it's got its mouth open and what that implies and i've also got the, dr the, the drill hole coming from the bottom through to the top so you, you can wear it as a pendant and if you were to wear it as a pendant always have the mouth looking up to your chin because the mouth is open and what it's doing is it's collecting wealth it has got its mouth open um, as you see why they have lucky fish is you'll see that they come up for air and if it's raining they can drink the rain water but rain actually represents wealth so having it facing up like that represents wealth so i am going to be wealthy and i'm i've got my little talisman to give me wealth um, again, so many things you can do with it. You, you could just have it on a cord, as a bracelet, as a charm, because these are dainty enough to have as charms. You can make it into a ring, into a bracelet. And also, again, because you've got that Y there, it's got a space that if you wanted to, you can attach a bead there as part of your design. So lots and lots of things you can do with that. So all of these beads have very personal reference to me. And these are designs that I was given as gifts, not these particular designs, because mine were embellished in gold and th th there's things that I have, but I won't wear. But I know that I would wear this. So I don't know which one you prefer. Now, I designed these back in... Um, oh, November and everybody that, that watches Jewelry Maker or watches my Facebook page knows I'm absolutely obsessed with Jade. I've been brought up with Jade all my life and I was so delighted when Georgie said to me, Susie, do you want to come up with some designs for bees? And I said, yes, please. And I thought, right, I'm actually going to design bees that are very close to my heart that I can give as presents. I want to get these myself because I want to give them as presents. They all have meaning and they're delicate. And also, um, they're useful from a jewellery maker's perspective because I don't know about you, sometimes you find findings and you think, obviously the person that designed this wasn't a jewellery maker because this, that or the other, or it's beautiful but it's a bit too big for me to wear. Or I wish they'd put the drill hole somewhere else or something. So I tried to design these um, that were actually multifunctional so that you can make your own designs 
and uh, use them in different ways to anybody else. For instance, now I'm going to look at the um, bamboo. This one, if you're into wire work, you can thread it through and then you can wind your wire around it and make little leaves. And if you had two, as I say, you could then make a lovely design. So you could incorporate that into uh, a necklace, an asymmetrical necklace. But what I like about this is for my son, who just is really simple, he doesn't want anything fancy or flash, I'm just going to thread a bit of cord through there and that's going to be it. And that is really, really personal. And that's for personal growth. And I think sometimes when you're, when you're going through life, obstacles happen and you think, oh, for goodness sake, you know, it gets you down. But this, when you just look at this, thinks, no, this is actually going to help me grow. I've got to get past this. And how I deal with it will affect how I grow as a person. And it just reminds you, with all my bead collection, is just to be positive about everything that happens. As I've said quite often, you have to have sunshine and you have to have rain. You have to have the balance. It's like yin yang. You've got to have contrast. You can't just have too much of one thing. And all my designs really remind you of that balance the eternal balance of nature that all that comes round, there will be a cause and effect. If we had too much sun, and it's lovely when we get into the summer, pray that we get the summer, but you know what it's like when we've had 30 days of sunshine, no rain, we're all sick to death of the sun, and we're thinking, right, now all my plants have died, I need some rain. So you don't appreciate the rain till you've had too much sunshine. And it's the same with rain. But the thing is, with rain or too much obstacles and um, things that happen that we see as negative, gets us down. And we always remember those. But you need that because when you come out the other side and something nice happens, you remember it more. And it teaches you how to deal with things because... It just shows you, I got through that, I'm a better person for that. And actually, if that was to happen again, I'm in a bet better position to deal with it. So I just want you to look at these as lovely symbols. Re you know, if you're not into any of that and you just love them for their designs, know what they mean. But they're lovely to wear just as pendants. I'm wearing my little Hamza hand here. And you can see roughly how they're going to look on the decolletage. You know, um, just really simple, everyday wear, never take it off. Either be with a cord or with silver, gold, whatever. And as I say, you know, this one here, um, this is my lotus leaf, which is my other one that I shall be wearing. So there. And here I've put, there you go, can you see that? I've just put a little peg bale in there and... Just really simple, and as I say, yeah. Now, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'm going to tell you what's coming up, because in about five minutes, we're going to be starting the proper show proper. And so at eight o'clock, as you know, we've got the early bird, and on our early bird, we've got extended chains with gemstones. We love those. Always really, really useful, as you know. Then at nine o'clock, we've got a book launch with a lovely lady called Louise Sojin Tom whom many apologies for that but I've seen her book it looks fantastic so that is exciting so that's a jewellery book for jewellery making fantastic then at 10 o'clock we've got the deal of the day um, I think we've got Dave Tross if I'm not mistaken, with Sakura Agate. Now, for those of you that don't know, Sakura Agate is a beautiful sort of flesh-coloured stone and it's got these lovely pops that look like flowers. And then to top it off, we've got Taipei Grey Jade Bangles. You know, love a bangle. So, hope you can join me in 10 minutes. Grab your cuppa. I'm back with you with the lovely L very, very shortly. <laughs> Happy 13th birthday, jewellery maker. Happy birthday!
Happy 13th birthday, Jewelry Maker. I can't wait uh, to share the celebrations and some cake with you guys. Tune in for the epic deals that we've got in store for you. Uh, and happy birthday once again. Hi, my name's Susie Mellon, and I just want to wish Jewelry Maker a very happy 13th birthday. Mwah. Jewelry Makers, this Saturday is the closure of Jewelry Makers 13th birthday party celebrations. Boo! But don't worry, we've got a fantastic Saturday show for you. I'm going to be joined by the fantastic Susie, who is launching for the very first time her own Jadeite bead collection. Also, your deal of the day, you've seen it, is the beautiful Sakura Agate. We have it in brand new shapes and sizes, and also the most exquisite cashmere grey jadeite bangle. There's more, an exclusive book launch, gem extender chains, and lots of fun and games. So make sure you don't miss out that's this Saturday, the last official day of the birthday. Hello, Jewelry Maker, John Scott here. Just wanted to wish you a very, very happy birthday. 13 years, my word, 13 years. You've not had me on enough, have you? I'll see you very soon. Have a fantastic 13 days. Happy birthday, Jewelry Maker. From the Hobby Maker team. Happy birthday, Jewelry Maker. 13 years of crafting your own gemstone jewelry. And I know this birthday celebration is even more exciting gemstones to come. Happy birthday. you are officially a teenager. Over the last 13 years you have brought us the most amazing products and fantastic inspiration. So thank you so much and have a wonderful birthday. I'm very excited to come and celebrate with you. Hi, Charlie here, Summer Street Director. I just wanted to wish Jewelry Maker a happy 13th birthday. Hi, you lovely people. Happy 13th birthday. Love seeing you when we take over from me at one o'clock each day. Have a great time. Keep on making. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday, jewellery maker. It's Yvonne here. Just wanted to pop in and send huge congratulations for 13 fabulous years of jewellery maker. I couldn't be more delighted to be joining the jewellery maker team. I look forward to joining in with the frivolities during birthday week. And there's only one thing to say. Cheers. Oh, happy birthday, jewellery maker. <laughs> Buying with Jewelry Maker couldn't be easier. Here's a quick overview of how to get involved. When you see a product you like and you want to purchase, you will see the graphics appear on the screen. You'll see the item code and a starting price. As time goes on, you'll see the price drop. And as viewers call in and customers add it to their baskets online, you'll also see the quantity decrease too. No matter at what point you order, everybody pays the final low price. And there's only one PMP charge on everything you purchase throughout the day. We offer you a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk whether you're purchasing for the first time or any time. Happy shopping with Jewelry Maker. Happy 13th birthday, Jewelry Maker. Let the party begin. 13 days of banging deals coming your way. Shitting. Happy birthday, Jewelry Maker. We hope you love all of the products that we've been developing for you over the last year. Happy 13th birthday, Jewelry Maker! Good morning! Morning! Bless
Yes, our Susie doing a sterling job this 